So the chair now recognizes President Fawn Sharp to testify for five minutes. Welcome. Good morning, Chairman. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for your leadership in convening this hearing. I also want to thank uh, the committee members, and I especially want to thank uh, Congressman Kilmer for his uh, very active leadership, advocacy, and partnership with the Coral Nation in the issues that we're facing, the imminent harms uh, of our coastline. My name is Fawn Sharp. I serve as president of the Quinault Indian Nation. I'm only the ninth president since the turn of the last century. So I've come to enjoy this work. Early in my presidency, I found out about the impacts of climate change. A tribal elder pulled me aside, took me to the upper Quinault, explained how the river system has been changing, talked about the depletion of our prized blueback sockeye salmon, and in that first six months of my presidency, I really wanted to understand the, the true impacts and what's causing the rapid decline of our fisheries resources. I convened a briefing of our team of scientists, the team of scientists from the Northwest Indian Fish Commission and others that I could reach out to. I learned that one of the main problems uh, facing uh, the Quinault Nation is, is not only the, the rapid decline of our prized sockeye blueback salmon, but there are many other macro environmental issues uh, directly facing the Quinault Nation that I would like to touch on and explain why this bill is so important to us. So to the far east of the Quinault Nation, we have four glaciers that feed the mighty Quinault River. I, I personally took a helicopter over the Anderson Glacier fully expecting to see a glacier. I saw nothing. I saw dirt. I saw a very small, shallow pool of murky water, but there was not a glacier. Uh, six months ago, I took another helicopter flight up to see how the White Glacier was doing, and I learned that it has rapidly receded in the last eight years. Uh, to the far west, we are facing a rapid sea level rise. The two villages where we primarily have residents, the village of Tahola, which is our basic headquarters, and Queets are both having to relocate to higher ground. Uh, this is a massive effort, a 65 to $100 million project. These communities are where we have our schools, our jail facility, our post office, our main store, our schools, our Head Start, our daycare, our elders programs, all of those uh, facilities are going to have to be moved to higher ground. We are geographically now classified as living below sea level. And so with any uh, storm surge, and that's happened, we've, I've had to declare four states of national emergency at the Quinault Nation. I've been in a situation where I've received a, a warning that we are going to have a, a high tide. And in just a, a moment's notice, trying to figure out how am I going to evacuate 1,000 residents some elders who are on dialysis and other needs, and, and it's just been very stressful uh, to try to figure out how we are going to do uh, both short-term and long-term uh, fixes to address the coastal uh, dangers that we're facing. I also learned that uh, we're in a tsunami zone. Uh, the last major tsunami occurred in the 1700s. These are uh, significant events that are due three to 500 years, and we are due for um, a tsunami at this point, a, an earthquake. And in the last month, we've seen earthquakes in Southern California, all the way up to Canada. Uh, that we are located in the Cascadia subduction zone, which is a very vulnerable area. Should we uh, sustain a, a significant uh, earthquake, our emergency hazard reports have uh, established that we could face up to a 50-foot high a uh, water surge, and that would wipe out the entire village. And this is a place where our ancestors signed treaties with the United States. That very place is now underwater. Uh, there are elders that have reported that in their lifetime when they were children, they could stand on our shore and see the length of a football field, and now the shore is encroaching upon our village. And so this is a, an issue where we have tremendous need, and as Congressman Kilmer pointed out, I've spent the last two weeks on the ocean. Uh, two weeks ago yesterday, I launched at Quinault, pulled a canoe uh, up into Macaw. It was a 14-hour in the Pacific Ocean. We uh, went into the Straits of Juan de Fuca, into s the uh, South Puget Sound, up into the Salish Sea to the, near the Canadian border. And I feel so strongly about this issue. I, I wanted to personally take a red-eye flight last night. Uh, 24 hours ago, I was pulling a canoe in the Salish Sea, and I wanted to be here to, one, express my gratitude to you for your leadership, and to humbly and respectfully uh, ask that you support the tribal uh, needs for parity. 
Uh, we absolutely need to have parity with states. Scientists around the world are not only recognizing that indigenous populations are disproportionately impacted, we have very few, to, little to no resources. And so this bill is vitally important that we achieve parity with the states. And with that, I thank you for your leadership and I thank you for your time and the invitation. Well, thank you very much.